Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We're back for another In the Hunt. And as you saw there, we're at Hakata Station in Fukuoka and specifically a Surugaya. And what we're looking at here is the gaming section that they had available at this location. And it was quite, uh, quite big here. This is like the principal aisle that has a lot of the retro stuff. And I guess we're going to start here at the end at the, at the display case, the showcase. And let's just get it underway. Um, pretty fun coming here to this shop. There was a few things that I actually picked up. Nothing from this specific case, but I was tempted by this, the Lollipop Chainsaw Valentine Edition, coming in at 1100 yen, or 11,000 yen, excuse me. Kind of pricey that one, but I didn't expect to see that. And then we have, what is that, the Gotobune uh, Quintuplet Sisters. And then a couple other of uh, newer stuff. We have Celeste and then Breath of the Wild there. Now that Celeste, 12,000 yen. And I think that one is actually cheaper on Amazon. But we have uh, Metroid uh, Samus Returns, a special edition coming in at 12,000 yen. I actually would love to pick up a copy of that perhaps sometime soon. And then there's the Guiana Sisters DS for 9,500. But anyhow, let's just go ahead and make our way down the main aisle here that we just walked through. We have some Wii games, some DS games, 3DS games. And as much as I would like to focus on these, I'm going to focus on another platform that I feel like I always forget. Um, and that's going to be the GameCube. Just going to pan down here. And there isn't quite you know there's not too many gamecube games but some of the ones that they had i thought were interesting like this uh lupon the third treasure under the sea now this is completely new to me i had no idea that this was uh available on the gamecube or i'm not even sure what what exactly this is i wonder if this is like an anime that's what it looks like and then we have this other game for 1600 again completely new to me i have no idea what this could be but it looks like it could be some kind of like a sim game and then we have 1080 Silverstorm. Now this one is one that I believe was also released in the States, but it's not one that I've played. And then we have Bloody Roar Extreme. I definitely want to get a Bloody Roar game. And this one's coming in at 1,000 yen. And, you know, uh, come, come to think of it, I should have probably picked that up. Then we have product number three by Capcom, Fight Night Round 2. And then we have Zelda, uh, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker for 800 yen. Now... The little tag there says that it's uh, some damage or something like that. But we're going to make our way into the N64. Freaking awesome system, the N64. And this is one that I kind of went in hard on, you know, collecting for uh, during the fall of, uh, of this very year. Which, by the way, Happy New Year to all uh, the Retro Rewire audience. Um, we're pretty much uh, at the end of the year. And hopefully the new year will bring uh, great things to all of you. But anyhow, let's continue here with the N64. We have, what do we have here? Smash Bros. there for 2,900. That box looks pretty good. And then we have Castlevania 64 at 5,900 yen. Now, this game I do like. Um, I think there was a... I think it's known as one of the weaker entries, especially since it's like the first uh, 3D uh, Castlevania. But something about it that's pretty cool. I think it's the music. And then here we have Super Mario 64, and this has the rumble support, as well as some additional things that were found in the North American release. And that's actually one, that's actually a game that I'm currently playing through now, as I have never beaten it. And it's a freaking awesome game. And then we have uh, Goemon 64. This is another one that I have. Unfortunately, I'd rather have this one in English, because there's a lot of little, uh, you know, since it's just like a text-based game, that's how the story unfolds. There's a lot of neat little details that you miss out if you are if you don't have a strong command of the Japanese language. But the gameplay is intact. And then here we go, uh, some Game Boy Advance titles. We have this bad boy. What is this? Uh, Street Fighter 2? Super Street Fighter 2? Uh, what is that? Uh, Turbo? Now this one actually would lo uh, I would love to play. I do have an extensive... Uh, yeah, Super Street Fighter 2X. I do have an extensive uh, Street Fighter 2 collection, and that's one that I would like to add. Then we have uh, F-Zero for 2,200 yen. That's not too bad of a price. Although I have not played this entry, but I, and I wonder how it stacks up to the rest. Although I recently did pick up F-Zero X on the N64. Great little racer. What else do we have here? We have some Kirby action down there. We have a Harry Potter. And then we have something Maker. Not really sure what that one was. 
And then let's make our way into the Game Boy area. We got some more Game Boy Advance up top, Game Boy Color. And then we have, what is this, uh, Super Mario Land for 2800 Now that's like a 1989 vintage. Always nice to see those uh, early Game Boy titles. And then we have, what is this, uh, this is known as Wario Land 4 for 2200 yen. Now this is a freaking awesome game. And I remember this is one of the earliest games that I had when I got my Advance way back in the day. And that one still holds up. I actually do have a copy of that, although it's in the it's in a loose cart, which is fine by me. And then I believe this is like the Pinball Kirby, which is uh, coming in at 3,600 yen. And then this was like a, I think I picked up a KOF game for the Game Boy. Look at that, 16,000 yen. And actually, some of these games play are freaking awesome on, on the Game Boy Advance. I have a... Uh, Samurai Showdown and Fatal Fury, and those are great ports on the on the Game Boy of all things. And then we have Saga. I'm not sure what this is about, but pretty cool cover there. Looks like it could be an RPG, judging by the screenshots there. What else do we have here? We have another Kirby. I think this is another pinball game for 2,500. I wonder how many Kirby games are available for the for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. There seems to be quite a bit. I actually have two but there's definitely more than that. And then in the bottom we have Wario Land 3. Now I also have this game and uh, coming in at 2,200 yen. Although I haven't given it much, much attention, but hopefully one day I'll be able to just sit down and just plow through it. Alrighty here, what do we have? We have the loose carts. No manuals, no nothing, just uh, either a loose hue card, disc system game, or cartridge. What else do we have? What do we got here? Now this this is where the time goes, you know, just kind of browsing through all the, the little peg hooks. We have uh, Bonk's Adventure for 1,700 yen. And that's a, that's a little bit on the pricier side for Game Boy games. Or at least like in the mid, the mid range, especially for a loose cart. And then we have Kirby 64 for 350 and Doom 64 for 2,100 yen. That's not too bad of a price there for, for that game. Freaking awesome game. I have it for the Switch as well as for the N64. Then we have Turok for 800 yen. I should have picked that up. That was a that was a pretty cool game. It's been years since I've played it. I think I still have the, the Turok comic books too. And then we have uh, Bonk on the old PC Engine for 2,200 yen. That's not too bad of a price considering it's a lot more incomplete. And then here we have 2,600 for its sequel. Bonk. The Bonk games are pretty fun. And then we got the Disk System games there. And then Game Gear games. And then we have some Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive as it's known in Japan. Got some more over here. What do we have? Air Drifter. That's some pretty cool uh, font there. And then we got a Sonic game for the Game Gear coming in at 1,600 yen. And then that's just going to segue right into the PC Engine games. With a, with a little bit of Neo Geo CD games. Oh man, the PC Engine. That's another system that I went in uh, pretty hard uh, this year. And the Neo Geo CD, my goodness. But here's Bonk, uh, complete in the in the box for 6,900 yen. 2,000, what was it? 2,200 yen uh, loose. Then we have Tiger Road for 4,000 yen by Capcom. And another Capcom here, uh, Capcom game here, uh, Champion Edition Street Fighter 2. And this is one that I will pick up sooner or later. Definitely have to have that. It'll, it'll go well with the other Street Fighter 2 uh, versions that I have. And then we have Tiger Heli here for 3,000 yen, which that is a freaking amazing cover. Freaking love that cover for Tiger Heli. And then this here is a demo disc. Uh, and it looks like Bonk 3 was one of the playable uh, demo discs or demos on the on the disc there. Pretty cool to see that, especially if you're a collector of all things PC Engine. And then what do we have here? I have no idea what that is, but that cover is awesome. That kind of reminds me of Appleseed. At least, uh, oh gosh, what's the the name of the? the author and illustrator behind uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell. That's what that reminds me of. John a blank, but anyhow. 
keep the show moving here and then look at this art type one and two freaking love those covers as well and then we have uh what is this uh genpei and the the genji and the heisei clans and then we have dragon saber for 5,000 yen one day i'll pick that up and then let's make our way into the bottom half we got a few 3do games here super street fighter 2x that's a great game super something this looks like it's a uh, uh not quite adult rated i think it has like a 16 and older rating and what else do we have virtual stadium nothing really too stand out there for the 3do but here we have neo geo and neo geo pocket games they actually had a few cool ones here nothing that i ended up picking up but not king of fighters 99 7800 yen that's not too bad we have the king of king of monsters 2 for 7100 again not too bad sonic wings 3 for 6900 and then we have fatal fury 2 for 6800 can't believe that's a, a pricey game and then here we have special garo for 2400 yen that's a freaking awesome game some of these games I do want, but I rather have them in the in the AES flavor. What else do we have here? Let's make our way on to uh, into the next section here. And uh, yeah, back back to the PC Engine, but this is the the PC Engine ROM ROM. We have a uh, Gradius, Gradius, Gradius. Who knows how you pronounce that, but. Here's another interesting game. Pretty cool cover there coming in at 2,300 yen. That could be uh, an RPG. That's my guess anyways. And then we have Ballas here for 5,800 yen. And then here just making my, my little cameo as we make our way into the PlayStation section. Now, half of, this, half of this aisle here is just PS2 and PS1 games. And that's where we're going to... We're going to head right into the PS1 games. Um, but look at this. Maximo for the PS2. That one I saw right away. I used to have that game. I had the North American version and I beat it. Freaking awesome game. A great follow-up to the Makai Mura series. And then this here. This game I actually picked up, which is Vampire Hunter D for the PS1. And it was mainly because of the cover, not 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 really because of the game itself. I haven't played it before and I haven't really heard great things about it. But that was just mainly for the cover. Maybe I'll frame it, I don't know. And we have uh, Dynasty Warriors for 4,600. And then we have another um, um, Bloody Roar game here. This is 4,200. And I believe this is part four. I could be wrong, but I believe that's uh, part four. Man, oh man, I definitely want to pick up a... Or part two, look at that. Way off. But I definitely would like to pick up a Bloody Roar game. I've only played it uh, the, a handful of times. And I can't even remember which one which one I played. And what do we have here? Oh, this is uh, Toshinden. This is like... Uh, like I think this was like the last release in the Toshinden series. Yeah, what is that? Toshinden... Sub Subaru, something like that. I wonder how this one is. Part three was kind of like, eh. I think the the series topped out with part two. Then we have Vigilante Eight Second uh, Second Defense or Second Battle. Freaking love this game, and I I have it on uh, the Sega Dreamcast, and that's the one that I ended up uh, uh, playing back in the day. But the PlayStation version is no slouch, and I believe it's also available on the N sixty four. But a lot of PlayStation 1 games, a lot of good stuff. Uh, definitely, they had a lot more than I was able to show. You can easily spend um, quite a bit of time here. Look at this awesome cover to Lunar uh, Eternal Blue for 3,200 yen. Freaking love that cover. And then we have Macross, Do You Remember Love for 5,200 yen. This is also available on the Sega Saturn, but I definitely love the, the PlayStation 1 uh, cover art more. And then we have, what is this, uh, Image Fight and X Multiply for 8,500 yen for the PS1, which that seems to be a little bit lower priced than what I'm normally uh, used to seeing it. But look at that, two great shooters by Irem. 
And then here we go back to the Vampire Hunter D, 1,700 yen. And it, it seems to be like, I did play like the initial, uh, the initial uh, intro bit, and it seems to play out like a. Uh, and look at that, there's the the other cover, same game, just a different release, but it kind of plays like an RE game. Then we have Gekyo, I believe that's a shooter, also available in the states. And look at this, a North American version game. Siphon Filter 3 for 2,500 yen. Oh man, oh man. I've never actually played any of the games in the in the Siphon Filter series. Then we have R-Types. Freaking love this game. And this collection is great too. Coming in at 5,100 yen. And then we have uh, Parodius. And I'm not sure what that is. That looks like to be like some shmup maker. And then uh, Star Sions. <laughs> I have no idea. Crazy Ivan. This is also available on the on the Sega Saturn. Now this was like a first person shooter, and I believe it also got a sequel. Haven't played these, but I remember reading about it in a uh, Game Fan magazine. <laughs> then we have Ace Combat, the first one, and then here's the collection to uh, the title shmups, and then Ride in Project. There, that's another great game. It includes part one and two, and it has full uh, vertical or tate mode enabled. Now we're going to make our way into the PlayStation 2. And look at this, Virtual Fighter 10th Anniversary. Now, for some reason, this one seems a little bit different. I think uh, the one I have has a different character. And then here's part two for 3,600 yen. I wonder how that one is. But going back to the 10th Anniversary, um, I haven't seen this variant. I forget who's on the cover of the one that I have. I think it's Akira. All sorts of great stuff here too. Here we have uh, Curse of Darkness, Castlevania for 3,900 yen. I definitely want to pick this up uh, sometime just to round out the, the Castlevania uh, collection of games that I have going. And then again, Maximo for 700 yen. Look at that cover art, freaking amazing. I did have a, a great time with this game, and I actually had this game in my hand for quite some time, but I ended up leaving it because I beat it. I did everything that I wanted to do years ago, and, and I'm not going to replay it. There's just so much that I have going on. And this looks like an interesting game, like some kind of survival horror game or something like that. At least, just judging by the vibe of the picture there. Or it could be a mystery game. Oops. Put that back. Nothing happened. But yeah, kind of an interesting cover there. And what else we have here? Anyhow, I guess we'll make our way into a display case. Now, this one was actually up front near the cash register. And look at this, PlayStation 5s. We have the digital editions. Two of them there for about almost uh, 7,000 yen. But anyhow, for the next episode, we're going to continue here. We're going to take a look at Sega Saturn, uh, the Pippin even. Uh, that was kind of interesting to see. And then the retro display case, both games and hardware. Anyhow, my name is JJ. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.